Welcome to my thoughts on the end of Gundam Requiem for Vengeance. Before I go any further, I must say, spoiler warning ahead, I'm going to talk about things that happen in the ending of Requiem for Vengeance, and I'll also talk about some things that happened and some spoilers for other earlier Gundam series. I just have to be able to compare this to things that happened in other Gundam series. Now, the ending of this with the death of the Gundam pilot felt wrong to a lot of people. There's some online dissatisfaction with the ending. And it felt like the death should have been more heroic or explicitly self-sacrificial in some way. Now, I agree that this feels discordant, but I think that's intentional. And it's about the central theme of the series. So let's dig into it. First, remember, this is the death of the main antagonist of the series. Regardless of his age, this is the bad guy we're talking about. Now, heroic or self-sacrificial deaths are not guaranteed for characters in Gundam, particularly antagonists. There's a tradition of sudden non-heroic deaths, even for antagonists that do good things at the end. And I think the perfect example of this is, uh, is Cassilia Zabi in Original Gundam. She does a good thing <laughs> there right before her death, and then she's just trying to escape with her people when she dies. Her death, in and of itself, does not save any of her men. It does not further the cause of the war. It doesn't help them escape easier. She just dies. You also see this with, say, a new returner in Gundam 00. Again, a character that some people might sympathize with might have had a chance for a heroic death robbed of that. And it's also true of antagonists in general. You know, Giran Zabi and Pactum Siroko do not get heroic deaths. So, not saying that the Gundam pilot is like Giran Zabi. Just saying he's a bad guy. So, what does he do to deserve a heroic or self-sacrificial death? Well, the problem is when you look at his actions, he mercilessly kills Xeon pilots, even when disabling them is possible especially given the overwhelming technological advantage and speed of the Gundam, he should be able to disable at least a few times here, but he doesn't. He consistently goes for the kill. Now, he does insist that this is not his fault, that he never had a choice. That said, we don't know the context. Teenagers often say they had no choice. Teen Gundam pilots often say this. Amuro Ray is famous for insisting that he never had a choice. And also, the Federation has no Flanagan Institute. There's no record of the Earth Federation churning out child soldiers um, that I know of. There may be an obscure manga somewhere, but in terms of main Gundam storylines, not really a thing the Earth Federation is doing at this point in the One Year War. So, I would take this with a grain of salt, right? Now, just before his death, he does turn off his beam saber, pushes Iria, the protagonist, out of harm's way, and then pauses. Now, that's good, but this is a reaction in a moment of crisis that puts him in no real danger. We know what the Gundam can take in terms of punishment. And it allows him to change his mind. He doesn't throw the beam saber away. He can always return to killing if he wants to. So again, a good thing to do, but not a dramatically active change of heart, other than just saving somebody who probably reminds him of his mother, right? He then verbally agrees with her viewpoint, you know, you're right, and then he dies. Now, does he deserve to die? No. But he's killed Xeon pilots without giving them the opportunity for heroic deaths. So it doesn't feel unjustified at this moment for me. It does feel discordant, but I think it's supposed to be. Now, let's look at the title, Requiem for Vengeance. Those aren't just pretty words. I think that's a really critical thing to understand about the series. What is a requiem? It is a musical composition in honor of the dead. But it's not Gundam Requiem, it's not honoring the dead that happened in the show, it's a Requiem for Vengeance. 
It's a musical composition in honor of the death of vengeance. The goal here is to kill vengeance, to end vengeance. The Gundam pilot dies without getting the chance to show any heroism or self-sacrifice because of the Zeon desire for vengeance. Throughout the series, we see people focused on vengeance, like Lashawn and Haley Arhun. Others are anti-vengeance, like Alfie. This is a clear theme of this series. Indeed, what is the Zeon war for independence but a desire for vengeance against the Earth Federation? Now, it's not just vengeance, but that's clearly a primary motivation for Zeon. We'll show them, right? The Gundam pilot is robbed of a heroic death, not because he's evil, but because he's on the other side. Full stop. And that in itself is the evil the series is showing us, of turning everyone on the other side into an irredeemable villain. And that's a problem whether we're talking about the other side in a war, another religion, or Democrats versus Republicans. So if you found the Gundam, Gundam pilot's death uncomfortable and wished he had a better death, you're right. But I don't think that's bad writing. I think that's effective writing. And if you disagree with me, well, I promise not to wreak vengeance on you. Thanks for watching.